season is in full swing, and if you're like most backyard chefs, you're always on the lookout for creative grilling recipes, tips, and inspiration that will get, that will help you grill like a pro. Today, I have the honor of speaking with celebrity chef and co-host of The Chew, Michael Simon, to share his thoughts on how anyone can elevate their skills on the grill. Good morning, chef. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you today. Good morning, Jenny. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. So I am uh, I'm the writer of a blog called Fables and Focaccia. I love the name, by the way. Thank you so much. It's a great name. So, uh, we're, we're, thank you so much. We're uh, we're paisans in a sense. You're from uh, your Italian back, background is uh, Sicilian, mine's Calabres. So we're we're quite close there. There you go. <laughs> so um, I uh, I like to follow a food calendar. Big no no big surprise as someone who loves food. And uh, according to my calendar, today is uh, National uh, Urban Spices Day. So we'll, we'll kick things off, and I want to ask you, what is your favorite herb or spice for grilling? Oh, gosh, my favorite spice for grilling. Oh, that's, you know, it's, it's hard for me to have a favorite. I, I love coriander as, as, as a general statement. It's one of my favorite spices to kind of crust different meats in and stuff because I think it gives it that nice citrusy kind of burnt orange pop that works really well. Um, so like kosher salt, cracked black pepper, and cracked coriander, I think really kind of elevates a lot of meats. So those would, uh, would you say that those are some of the essentials that folks should keep on hand during grilling season? Oh, absolutely. But I think the, the most important thing is to find spices and flavors that you really love, you know, to, to have a little bit of fun with it. Um, you know, like I love mustard seeds and celery seeds and, and cracked coriander and things like that. But I think anybody could find their flavor profile that they really enjoy. And it helps them really customize their own flavors, their own their own items, which I think is the most important thing about cooking. Okay, so obviously that's a great tip right there is, is for is for people to just find what works for them. Absolutely. What else can you offer as uh, what else can you offer up as, as some of your uh, tried and true for a growing season? Well, you know, I, I think the first thing is 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 have fun with it. You know, it, it's it, I'm from the Midwest. Our grilling season is very short, so you have to embrace it. You really have to enjoy it, and it's a time to be outside with friends and family. Um, but and so once that happens, the other important thing is 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 I like to get my grill hot first. So you know, 30, 40 minutes before I'm going to start cooking on it, I make sure the grill's ripping pretty good, seasoned properly. I keep a hot side of the grill and a cool side of the grill. That way that you could move food from one side to the other. You don't have to worry about it burning or overcooking. Um, also. When you're cooking meats, let them come to room temperature before you start cooking them. I also like seasoning them the night before if I can. That way those flavors could really permeate the meat and you get a deeper flavor of food that way. Um, and then once you get out on that grill, don't go crazy. Put the food on, let the grill do its job. One flip usually is all you need. Get the char four or five minutes on one side, four or five minutes on the other. Move it to the cooler side of the grill and cook it to the temperature you want. So. Um, I think a lot of times, especially men, like my father is the biggest, the, he, he, he's the worst about it. He puts a steak on the grill, he starts flipping it around like he's at a circus. Like, keep it simple, you know. Good char, good char, done. You know, you don't need big flames, it's not a show. You want nice even heat, you want texture, and you don't have to move the meat around that much. Do you have a preference, gas or charcoal? Oh, I'm a charcoal wood guy. I, I you know, I, I, I I know a lot of people have gas grills, and gas grills are great because you could still be outside cooking. But I, I love the the flavor of of charcoal and live and and wood. Live fire is where it's at for me. Awesome. Now uh, we've uh, we've seen you fire up many carnivorous creations. Um, <laughs> what what's your favorite uh, what's your favorite uh, protein to throw on the grill? You know, I. I it's, it's still tough to beat a ribeye or a burger for me. Like those are two of my favorite things to cook. But like a, a perfectly seasoned and grilled ribeye with a, a tomato, um, like some of that Costello blue cheese, a little bit of arugula, shaved red onion on top, salad with that charred steak is fantastic to me. Some of my favorite burgers I'm, I'm doing today. And, and that's really to me is, is what I love about summer. Mm-hmm. In in terms of uh, in terms of some of the toppings for burgers, what uh, what can you recommend that's a little bit creative for this season? Well, you know, I think there's there's two ways to do it. I usually like to do like something signature when people come over, and then get, have like almost like a little topping bar so people have options too. So, you know, the classics are 
are classics for a reason. So like grilled onions and mushrooms, great classic. Everybody loves it. I also love doing pickled red onions because they're a little acidic. They're a little pop, little poppy. They cut through the richness of the burger. You could also do pickled chilies, which work great. A little bit of guacamole mixes it up a little bit. Um, arugula, which is that it's peppery and fantastic and cuts through the richness again. If you're keeping a garden, heirloom tomatoes, so perfect on a burger. Some grilled uh, pineapple, a lot of people like the sweetness, and of course, salty, smoky bacon is always going to be a great topper. For sure, bacon, I'm in total agreement with you on that. <laughs> yeah. Makes everything just a little better. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now, um, you talked you talked about some great flavors, and um, I was just wondering, would there ever be a line of uh, Michael Simon inspired uh, sauces, marinades, rubs we might see in the future? I never say never to anything. You never know. So we're you know we uh, we're always playing around. We're having a good time. So you you might you, we might work some some of those things in at some point. <laughs> that would be really cool. Now uh, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of the chew. In fact, just the other day I cooked up uh, I cooked up your uh, merguez sausage on the hummus and tabbouleh. Sauce. Oh, nice! That was delicious. Did you enjoy it? Oh my god, it was phenomenal. It was uh, really nice, uh, really nice uh, flavors brought together there. I did I did Mario Batali's recipe and your recipe on two separate days though. <laughs> Perfect. We love that. That's what Mario and I are trying to accomplish. I love that you're using them. Fantastic. And um, I, I mean, obviously, you guys, it, you can see it that you're having a great time on the show. And I was just wondering, how how much do your co-hosts inspire um, inspire some of your cooking? Well, you know, I I think that you know Mario and I have known each other 20 years, so I think I've been fortunate to be around great chefs my whole life and are a good part of my life. And I think we inspire each other on a, on a daily basis. You know, you you bad ideas around, you come up with different things, and 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 it, it helps inspire us on a daily basis for sure. Wonderful. And um, I'll just wrap it up with my last question here. But uh, Father's Day is just around the corner. And uh, each year I like to cook up a nice meal for my dad. And uh, it typically involves the grill. So I was just wondering uh, if you could recommend a menu to inspire me for this year's barbecue uh, for Father's Day. Well, I'll tell you, for, for my dad, th this is a burger that I make for my dad. My dad likes burgers. My father likes burgers on Father's Day. He wants a round of golf and a hamburger. So... This this is the one that I've been making for him. It's we call it the Fat Doug. So it's a beautiful beef burger with sirloin brisket um, and and short rib ground into it, and then we top it with a little bit of slaw, and then we top it with some smoky peppery pastrami, and then that Costello creamy Havarti cheese, and it's just perfect. And then. I like to keep my mom happy on that day too, because if my mom is happy, my dad is happy, and my mom doesn't like ground beef, so we make her a turkey burger, and I top it with a little bit of avocado, um, the Costello burger blue cheese and sprouts. That way my mom's happy. If my mom's happy, she's nicer to my dad. My dad's happy. I'll let my dad beat me in golf that day, and it's the perfect day. <laughs> Wonderful! Thank you so much. That burger does sound most watering. I think I may, uh, I may be cooking that one up next weekend. Well, great! You can get all the recipes at CostelloCheeseUSA.com. So you'll be set for Father's Day and grilling season. Wonderful! Thank you so much, Chef Simon, for speaking with me today. It was a true pleasure. And on a, just on a personal note, do you have any plans to come to Toronto anytime soon? Um, you know, I have some friends out there, so I, I do get to Toronto quite a bit. So I'll try to get there for sure. Wonderful! We would love to have you here. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You too.